Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. The purpose of this video is to show you one of my favourite features in Smartsheets, which is to automatically show a filtered view of only the items relating to the current user. This is incredibly useful where people work across multiple projects or teams and can have multiple plans or action logs to review. By creating a My Tasks or My Actions view, you can provide your users with a personalised view. And not only that, they can then update the tasks and actions from within that sheet without having to go to the individual sheet if that's appropriate. So combined, these are massive time savers and really help end users get to the information they need to fast. So let's dive in. So I'm going to start off in a project scenario. And one of the great benefits of Smartsheet is that you've got these dashboards where you've got key information and this is for project team members to go into. They can see the various items on the project and tasks due this week, but they can see their individual list of what tasks they have to do. Now, in this case, this shows me that actually my tasks, they don't start till May. But I can click on this report and it'll take me in and I've got the various information here and I can see it in a different view. Now, as a report, I can change that view to be grid or Gantt view, but here, this is really useful for me that I can see the tasks as they're lined up. So that's at a project view. So let's now go to a portfolio view. Now this is in the case where you've got someone who's working on lots of cross-functional projects and they've got various projects which they need to keep track of, of what tasks they got to do. So in this case, I'm assigned to three separate projects. So you can see Bubaloo, Step Up and Zap. And again, this is really useful for me because at a glance I can say, right, what tasks have I got to do and when? Again, this is set up so I can click on it and also it's got the Gantt chart view so I can see kind of what's coming up when on this bit. So you can see February, what tasks have I got to do? So let's dive in. So again, through, it's set up from the dashboard that I can click on it and go straight into the report. And into the report, where the power lies is that from here I can directly update the project plans directly. So if I look at um, step up, I've got the conduct internal pilot. Well, this is completing next week. Well, actually, we've, it's Friday now. We've managed to finish it. So I'm now going to mark that as 100% complete. And I'm going to put finished two days early exclamation mark. And if I now save that, that's going to be 100% complete. If I click on through to the plan, you can see it's easy. If you the people want to go to the plan, again, you can have the link to the sheet name. If I click on that, it's going to take me through to the plan. And again, you can see conduct internal pilot complete 100%. And the comment I just put in, finished two days early, has just literally gone in and be, been marked there. So if I now go back, and you can see that within this, that has now disappeared off the task, um, off the list. The reason for that is on the filters, I'm asking it to only show me items which are not complete. So again, so you don't have too cluttered a list and you don't have the stuff which you know you've done already. So how does this work? Well, the key point here is you have the owner. Now the owner needs to be, um, so in this filter, for it to come through, it is filtering on current user. For this to work, it needs to be a contact list. So what it's doing is it's looking at who's logged in. So in this case, I'm logged in as demo productive. And on that basis, it says demo productive, the current, you are a current user, so therefore it will show me all the tasks there. If I was logged in as another person, so if I was logged in as Rich Coles, the view would be for the tasks assigned to Rich Coles. But what it means is you don't have to have different filters set up for different people. They go in and see their own ones. And again, you can set up all sorts of different filters here in terms of what time frame you want to be included, etc. But in this case, just to give you a sense, it's a simple filter with anything that's not complete that I need to do. And again, the way it works is you can see this is pulling information from multiple sheets here. So this has got four sheets and you can see, well, I was looking at the four sheets, but clearly of the four sheets which are listed. So I don't have any tasks on Clubcard, for example. So that's great, but it's pulling out that information and it's serving up the what's needed for the various people. So how does this actually work and how do you go about doing it yourselves? So I'm going to give you a quick view. The first thing to do is you create a report and within the report that brings the filter on. And you can do that for one project or one actions log or you can do it for multiple ones and let's, let's do that. If then you want to have that on a dashboard, then again you just embed the report onto a dashboard. So 
Let's go in and create a report. And in this case, I'm just going to create a standard row report and my tasks demo, and what I'm going to call it. And as I launch into it, it's going to say, well, what information, where do you want to draw this information from? So I'm going to go into my demo piece here, going to my project management section, go to project management here, and I go to projects. So I'm going to select a project time plan just to get started here. So Bubaloo, for example, if I click next, again, I can, I can at the same basis, select a variety of different projects here as again. So if I go to the time plan, you know, for, for Bubaloo, Step Up and Zap, for example, so I can select all of these um, as we go. So project time plan, one by one, and they're all selected in. Again, you can select the whole folder. Um, when you're creating reports right at the beginning, it's best just to select the ones you want because otherwise you have a whole selection of columns that you don't necessarily need. So what it's then doing is you'll see it's created the report and the column, which is actually the task name, is called primary. So we'll change that in a moment. It's got the sheet name and the primary. But it's saying, what other columns do you want? Because it will always have the primary column coming through. Now, the, the order you select these in will be the order they appear on the sheet. So you can see if I select start date first, that goes first. If I was to do it in the you know, just in alphabetical order, then I either can move things around. So let's do this as an example. By the way, you can see this is they've got two percent allocated and allocation, so or percentage complete. So in this case, I want percentage complete, and I'm going to put end date. I'm going to put health, and what else is going to be useful here? I'm going to put notes as well. So if I now do next, that's going to take me on to the filters and the filter criteria. I'm going to go to who is the owner or allocated to. So in this case, it's called owner and in going to be the choice of has any of. And here, current user on that bit. And then the additional choice I'm going to put in here is percentage complete. I'm going to say is not equal to or as less than in this case, I'm going to put is less than one or 100%. If I press apply, you'll see then this list becomes a lot shorter. So a couple of quick things, because I did it in the wrong order, you can see I now need to move things around. Again, within a report, really easy, just drag it around. Um, again, select the column headers here and get them to be the right size that you want. You can see on that side, so on this one, also that's a lot wider than it needs to be. In fact, I'm going to do this both at the same time. So let's just make them a bit slimmer um, because again, that's useful. The health, maybe we should put that up front. Sheet name, we'll put that later. Notes, we might want that to be a bit wider. On this side, health again, let's just move that a bit more narrow. And then I'm going to change this to be task name because that's more useful uh, for people and what they're going to be looking for. So that's set up there, and then people can go in and, and add in comments directly to the notes section here, as I showed you. But again, to make it even easier for the users, you want to group it. So I'm now going to group this by um, project. So let's just see, have I got project? No. So I'm going to change this to be sheet name. And again, because the sheet name is the same as the project, so sort ascending, that's fine by me. So if I do sort ascending, save, and now what it's going to do is it's broken it out into that view there. So you can see very much as I had previously, this is now set up in grid view. If I want to move to Gantt view, I can. And then you can see that's taking up quite a lot of the sheet. I'm gonna zoom out on this bit because again, I want it to take up too much. So let's just move out from here. And again, you might want to just go into the settings piece here, open to today's date. Um, the start of the week for me is Monday. So I'm gonna do that. I save this section again useful people if they want to hyperlink and go to the actual project plan they can but otherwise this is done and it's saved and so what i'm going to do is i'm now going to come out of that to my tasks demo and then if you want to put that onto a dashboard so again new dashboard so my tasks demo dashboard if i can spell it correctly my tasks demo dashboard and if I go into the dashboard here, again, very simply, I can add a widget to this one, add a report. And if I go to add report here, the task here is I'm going to go for my tasks demo. My task demo. So again, 
found that, okay? And then the option here is I now to stretch it out and to use it. And what I'm also gonna do, so really importantly, a couple of things that you've gotta do here. So my tasks demo, so, well, this is the, this bit's not so important, but again, I like to make it look, um, look good. So I'm gonna change the color and the font um, color on here. Again, you can increase the size of this to be larger, my tasks demo. Now, the other pieces that is really important on this view, if you want someone to see their own tasks, the viewer mode, it needs to be adjusted to be their own perspective, which means when they go into that report, it will then look and show them what is right for them to see. If you leave it on last widget editor, they'll just simply see the view for the person who's created the dashboard. And widget behavior, again, do you want them to go into and be able to open up that report so they can write notes and etc.? Personally, I think that's great. So I'm gonna select open the data source, save. I've saved it. And again, you can see, maybe I need to just make that a bit longer because I've got more tasks. So again, I can drag the tasks down and make it longer. Now, again, because this is on a dashboard, you can do lots of things. You can start adding in all the various other items you want, your title, etc. You know, if you want the title, um, you know, for the dashboard. So I'm just gonna go into here, for example, and go, Demo dashboard, change that to be white font, for example, change this to be a dark blue, and again, increase the font size. Demo dashboard, here we go, and save. So this is how easy it is to do that piece, and let's just make sure it works properly. So you can see, if I click on that, and that takes me into the report, and once I'm in the report, I can then go and update this task accordingly. So let's find a task which is worthwhile doing. So zap time plan, I'm gonna say, right, this is now started because it's starting next week and saying um, started one, one week early. Saved and that goes in. And that is how simple and easy it is to set up. Again, I've done this from a project plan perspective, but if you're using, uh, the Smartsheet functionality for actions logs, and you've got multiple actions logs, you can see how quick and easy it is to do and have this report where people can just go in and update and just see what they need to see. So I trust that's been useful. Again, one of my favorite features within Smartsheet. And so, and I'll continue to go and do some more videos on some of my other favorite features. So there's quite a lot more videos to come because there are so many favorite features. Thanks for watching and enjoy Smartsheets. Bye for now.